Hi, my name is Chris Thurigood. I'm a botanist and a botanical illustrator and today we are going to be painting petals with watercolours. I've been painting a bird of paradise, it's a very beautiful flower, and it has wonderful orange, silky, shiny petals and that's what we're going to be painting today. So, let's get painting. Okay, I'm going to paint an orange petal on my Strelitzia and I really want this petal to look shiny and so I'm going to paint this in a slightly different way um, to that that I've shown so far on the videos. Now, ordinarily, I would cover my surface in water and wet it because, as I've said before, it means that the paint goes on very smoothly. I'm not actually going to do that in this case because I want some sharp white markings to show through. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down water in all of the places that are going to have colour, which is most of the petal, but I'm going to leave all of the areas that I want to be pure white completely dry. I don't really want those, even with soft blurred paint, I want them to be crisp, sharp, white markings. Some people add those afterwards with white paint, and you can do that in places, but if you rely on it too much, it looks a bit thick and gloopy, and to be honest, it doesn't look that professional. Much better to work with the paint rather than to just go back over it as a quick fix. Uh, it really does show. So I'm just going around the perimeter of the petal because all of that is going to have some color. Move my phone so that you can see the base. Okay, and the base I'm going to make wet as well. That's going to be completely white because that's what the base of a Strelitzia petal looks like. Um, now what? Okay, so I think I want a bit of orange sort of running through the middle. And these bands of colour. So I've put the water on fairly thickly, as you can see, it almost forms puddles. You don't want them to be too puddly because then you'll end up with a mess and it will, it will break its boundaries. I think that's about good enough to start putting some colour on. And I'll just show you my three different colour mixes here in my messy paint tray. Um, these are three, believe it or not, they're actually three different shades of orange which I've adapted by adding different amount of water to. So I'm going to take the palest, which is orange with a little bit of water, sorry, a little bit of yellow added. And now we're just going to plop that on. And I'm hoping it's going to sit really nice and smooth. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So our middle bits in here are going to be made up of this nice pale yellowy orange. And because I wet these areas first, it is going on nicely. It, it would not look quite so smooth and consistent if I just put it on dry. Actually, I'm going even yellower here at the very bottom. And I'm going to stop 
and allow that to seep into the pure white at the base of the petal. Now I'm going to go in with my medium coloured orange, which has got less yellow in, and I'm going to use that along one edge to give a sort of shadow. Back to my pale orange again for the edge. Think dark here. In case you can't tell, I'm making this up a bit as I go along. Now I do actually want this to be a little bit softer at the top. I'm not happy with this area here, so I'm just gonna blend those two bits. And finally, I'm going to go in with my darkest red-orange. That seems a bit drastic, but it will be okay. And I'm just going to add the edge and another stripe along here. These little flick like movements just start to blend the paint a little bit into the wash. I want to form a little shadow here, I think. Potentially a little too much white on my petal still. So I'm just going to connect this bit. I'm working against the clock here because you can see that the page has dried. There wasn't that much water to begin with. And as it starts to dry, obviously the colour will not sit as smoothly, so you'll get a different sort of finish. It's not the end of the world, but it does make sense to work quickly. And then finally, for this layer, I'm going to go in with a little bit of brown, so I'm going to be bold. Go steadily because you can't take it off. Just to demarcate that petal edge. And I'm just going to embolden this colour up here because it's a bit insipid. The same down here.
little stripes. Wet brush just blends that in, soften it. Okay, we're getting there. I'm now going to go in with a very, very fine brush. And with a little bit of brown, sort of ochre colour, I guess. I'm just going to add a bit of a sharper line for, by way of a border. Nice sharp tip. I don't laugh, but you can see that I've cut some of the bristles away from this brush to make it even sharper. Not good practice, to be honest, but it does the job for me. If I wasn't such a cheapskate, I would have bought a proper fine brush, which you can do. But I'm a big believer in trusting the paints, the techniques, and working with what you've got rather than having lots of expensive equipment. So I've been a little bit jagged there along that line because I've been a bit lazy. So I'm just going to go in with a softer brush, neaten that up. Another dollop of colour. Do you think we still need a bit more brown along this edge because it's looking a bit watery still? More shadow over here. She's going to seep nicely into the wet area, which is just what I want it to do. See, I'm just building the colour up bit by bit, letting each colour sit and do its thing.
And I think we can pretty much call that petal done. 